Hello, Flutterbys, it's Butterfly. How are you? How's it hanging? <laughs> I'm getting through these court cards because mainly I want to tidy up my area and do other things. So I'm going to get through making a marathon of videos and then kind of intersperse them over the next, I don't know, days, weeks, whatever. If things are kind of mixed up as they show up on my channel, welcome to my life. It's just the way it rolls, you know. Okay, so today we're talking about the Knight of Pentacles. Oh, Lord Almighty. If I was a techno geek, I wouldn't be interrupted by these noisy little beeps and bleeps. Okay, so Knight of Knights of the Round Table. No, I'm going to put this down like this. Okay, we got pentacles. Pentacles and testicles right here, right there. Free for you on this channel. Okay, this is, uh, so pentacles is basically a suit, as you know, as you've probably heard on the, you know, everywhere else on the planet and on my channel. Pentacles are basically a the um, suit that uh, pertains to the earth. That's the earth element associated to it. It has to do with um, matters of business, matters of money, matters of transaction. Also about relationships with family, with business colleagues, with friends. Um, what else might I say? And it also has to do with uh, basically, you know, matters of everyday mundane life, all the kind of routines that you do. Um, and the steps it takes to achieve success, mostly in business affairs or endeavors of everyday living. So the knight, however, is one of the four um, court cards in the suit of pentacles. And so you'd have a page, the knight, the queen, and the king. This one here is the knight. So it has what we call the energy of this masculine energy. So its counterpart, so to speak, would be the page, which we now call the feminine energy. Just to balance things out and make things all 50-50. Okay, um, this night here, you're going to be talking about somebody who is driven, who is stubborn. You see how the horse is just like, uh, standing right there. Ain't going nowhere, man. That's it. I am standing here, and it's not like the other kind of suits where, you know, you can see them riding off into the sunset with wind blowing in their hair all the time, and the clouds have wind in them. No, this one is stagnant. Bam. So that is your clue to say this is a, a very stubborn um, energy, or when you're reading this, there's something that's very stagnant or unwavering, unmoving. This is like Looking at a decision to be made, for instance, in, let's just say in a business affair or something, an affair of the, you know, money matters or an endeavor of daily living, and you're contemplating, you're looking at it, you're staring at it, but you're not going anywhere. It's just like being very firm. If there's an opposition to you, you're not negotiating, you're not wavering, your demands are not being met, and you are not going that extra step any further. Um, that can be a good and a, a not so good thing. So it really depends on how you're interpreting the cards. In in uh, one way, you can see that this person might be saying they're standing their ground. They're saying, "Okay, look, these are the demands that I am making in this in this transaction, and I am not going to constantly, you know, relinquish my position here and you know be a lesser person or uh, acquire less for my client." Whatever, you know, they're standing their ground. On the other hand, it can be something that's very stubborn where you're not moving ahead and actually balancing out to accommodate other people, to accommodate the situation, to be reasonable and move things forward. Sometimes, you know, it's been said you can't get blood from a stone kind of thing, which is a very weird way of saying, you know, you can't get something if nothing is there to be had. So you have to kind of be a little bit more reasonable, and especially in in matters of business. Um, on the one hand, as well, if you are standing there very stagnant, you're also looking at things and contemplating them in a very cautious way. So he's not running off into, you know, frivolously or carelessly without contemplating. He's not being um, too adventurous and too thrill seeking. In fact, he's not thrill seeking at all. This person is quite cautious and 
really studying every matter before he moves forward. Um, so it's kind of like a, an examining of every aspect of the, you know, whatever is whatever the matter is that you're reading about. This person is uh, practical because pentacles are a very practical suit, uh, realistic. Um, let's see, you're not, you're not, because you're cautious, another way to say that is that you're not going to be uh, taken by, um, you know, somebody giving you a, a, a an overinflated sales pitch, let's say. You're very, putting your feet on the ground and you are realistic, um, no, you can't lure this person into really um, you can't you can't pull the wool over this person's shoulder or over this person's eyes. That's what I'm trying to say. Um, the suit of pentacles is also about hard work, uh, the labor of the land, the working the earth, toil. This person's not afraid to get the work done. So it's not a matter of no, I'm not going to do something because I want somebody else to do it for me. No, this person's willing to put the work in. There's just something that is an obstacle or some for some reason this person's not moving forward. Um, if there's any movement at all, it's going to be slow. <clears throat> what else might I say about this? Um, you can trust this person. Trust this person very much. They're reliable. They uh, are focused on the task. They're patient, reliable, and um, yeah, they're, they're really kind of studying and looking into the pentacle. So they're studying and examining the whole situation. So that's basically what I have to say about the Knight of Pentacles. Now I'm going to show you some other um, decks that you know, we'll show you the, they'll, they'll show you their version of the Knight of Pentacles, although they might come with different names. So here we have the Wild Unknown Tarot. And this one here comes up with the Son of Pentacles. So they have son, daughter, mother, father. And this one here is the Son of Pentacles. This one here is the uh, Animal Totem. Uh, where's the name here? Lisa Robertson. Lisa with a E E Z A. Lisa Robertson made the animal totem. I really like this. This is the Knight of Pentacles in the animal totem. Shadowscapes Tarot. Another awesome one. This is the Knight of Pentacles in the Shadowscapes Tarot. I don't know if I can show you, you can go close. How gorgeous that is. Yeah, I wonder if you got a good picture of the other ones. Just to kind of give you a bit of a, isn't it cute? Oh my god, I just want to kiss that one. And of course, I think everybody has this stuff, this deck. It's kind of one of the staples. All right, now let's move on here. <clears throat> this is the uh, Victorian Fairy Tarot. This is just a, another gorgeous deck here. This is the Knight of Autumn. This one um, talks about the suits as. Uh, it's the seasons. So there is the night of autumn. I tend to be really attracted to cards that have animals in them. Although this one is the herbal tarot. The herbal tarot. And I'll just give this to you a little bit closer up. The herbal tarot. And as I've mentioned uh, before in previous videos, this the herbal tarot um, always has a feature plant. This one is called Elle Campagne. Elle Campagne. And I will look this up just for kicks and giggles because we can. Pentacles. And the ten and the page of pentacles. The, this is here. Knight of Pentacles is Elle Campagne. I'm not even going to try the Latin name for it. Inula. Helenium, whatever. I guess I did try it. <laughs> I lied to you. As if. Okay. So it's a digestive, an expectorant. Basically, an expectorant means um, like Ipecac. It'll kind of, well, Ipecac is more of a, an emetic. It'll make you vomit. But um, an expectorant will, when you have phlegm in your lungs, it will uh, expel it, get it out of your breathing 
of your breathing system. Okay, so that's what an expectorant is. Um, Elle campagne. What else can we say about that? It's a carminative. Carminative means it'll help you to digest. Uh, it calms your, you know, upset tummy kind of thing. Like uh, cinnamon or clove in a very soothing kind of a tea. So it's a carminative. Um, helps treat and prevent the formation of mucus in the lungs. Well, there you go. Um, cures coughs and aids digestion. Well, I, I, that's what I just said. I should write some. I should make my own deck. That's what I should do. Okay. What else have we got here? We have the whimsical tarot. Whimsical tarot. There you go. Ooh, close up. There you go. Whimsical tarot. Isn't that lovely? Lovely, lovely. Yeah. Okay. And what do we have here? In the little itty bitty book. Knight of Pentacles. Oh, yeah. The, this deck kind of gives you like a... Just a few words per card. It says financial activity, shrewd businessman. So that kind of really. Anybody know what fairy tale this is from or what child story that's from? It doesn't really say with the whimsical tarot. This is the ghost tarot. And here we have the knight of pentacles. Okay. Oops. And I'm not going to read the Knight of Pentacles out of the book because we would be here all day, actually. I'm just going to make you a little close-up. I just, ghost tarot, it's like ghost tarot just really speaks my language. I love it. Look at the borders on this. Hmm? And for the court cards, the, the, the upper little bit there changes. Ah, uh, yeah. Love it, love it, love it. Okay, so moving on. And this is where I'm going to read to you a little story that goes with the inner child card. Voila. Look at this. The pretty, pretty cards and the pretty, pretty colors. Okay. So, yes, I'm in a playful mode. Uh, Seeker of Crystals. So there you see I don't know, the main character running down a road. That kind of looks like Wizard of Oz, doesn't it? But it doesn't because, although it looks like a line that's running... I don't remember anywhere in The Wizard of Oz where there's birds coming to put a crown on a lion. I don't know what that story is. But I'm going to read it to you. Yes. Um, these are crystals. Did I? Oh, yes. Crystals. Because crystals are the... Um, are the earth card in here. Guide of crystals. Seeker of Crystals. Okay, the Cowardly Lion. I guess it is talking about the Cowardly Lion. So, sit back, enjoy your cup of tea, and I'm going to read you about a page and a bit of information about the Wizard of Oz and the Seeker of Crystals. The Cowardly Lion. We are all learning about the tremendous amount of courage required to face obstacles along the path of life. As we travel into the future, let us remember the story of the Cowardly Lion in the Wizard of Oz. Dorothy finds him in the woods, seemingly very defensive and self-assured. And when he, uh, when the lion's scary tactics don't work, he is confronted with his own fears and vulnerabilities. He sets off to see the wizard with Dorothy, Tin Man, and the Scarecrow to acquire some courage. As the story unfolds, the lion transforms himself through bravery in order to save Dorothy from the Wicked Witch. As in many fables and fairy tales, he, dis he his courage and magnificent true self emerge on the journey as he is asked to serve and protect his beloved companions. His earlier facade is no longer needed and he faces life-threatening situations in which truth, valor, and honor are required. In the Seeker of Crystals card, the Cowardly Lion is traveling on the yellow brick road and receiving a garland of flowers to crown his achievements. There is a strong rapport between his image and the beauty and the beast. Sorry, and the beauty and the beast trump card. If both cards do come up in a reading, it is indicative of a major lesson about spiritual empowerment. When the cowardly lion appears for you, remember to tap in your hidden strength and power. Sometimes this power must be expressed in a gentle manner. Other times it should be revealed in a fiercely passionate way. The false pride and selfishness 
that you may pro project out of fear and doubt are placed are, are best replaced with an honorable willingness to feel your own pain. Let the inner truth of your radiant soul come shining through. Just like the cowardly lion, you will be crowned with a victor's wreath denoting glory and hard-won accomplishments. Okay, so I guess in this story, in this version of the story, the cowardly lion is being rewarded with uh, the flower wreath on his head. And in the version that I know from the 1939 movie with uh, Garland, with uh, Judy, Judy, Judy Garland? Garland. Garland. <laughs> Anyways, um, yeah, he, he got a medal. He got a medal in that one. So, yeah, you, you did get a little something something for his effort. Okay, so there we are. That gives you a quick rundown of the Knight of Pentacles. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope this is giving you a little bit of insight and a bit, maybe probably more of a review for most people. But if you don't know a whole lot about tarot, it definitely gives you a bit of an idea as to, you know, what the stories and what the interpretations are about. Um, certainly any experienced card reader may deter a little bit from the, um, the traditional meanings because it really depends on a few things. It depends a little, you know, a lot, uh, for me anyways, it depends a lot on the traditional meanings. But any reader will also give themselves um, the license to integrate what the meanings, um, how the meanings change in association with the other cards around in the spread, plus uh, the person who's in front of you and the feedback that you're given. Because every every reading takes on a life of its own, and there's there really is an interaction and an energy that influences the whole reading itself, and it doesn't necessarily mean if your if your card reader doesn't follow exactly what's traditionally meant in the cards, it doesn't mean that they're giving you false information. It means that they're giving you what's being channeled. There you are. Um, I hope this finds you well. Take care. Have an amazing day.